With OpenAI's ChatGPT GPT store, anyone can now build a custom version of ChatGPT and sell it on the GPT store to make money this year. In today's video, I want to show you how to do exactly that and build the perfect GPT that grabs people's attention and makes you money this year while being super helpful for everybody using it. I'm going to dive right into my laptop and do a full walkthrough as I build out a GPT in real time and show you exactly how easy it is. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive right in. Okay, so in the GBT Builder, we've got two areas, create and configure. The configure area is basically where you set things like the name for your GPT, give it a description and its custom instructions, and then add some other features which we'll see in a second. The create side is the no code area where you can talk to the language model and actually have ChatGPT build your GBT for you through a conversational interface, which massively increases the reach and scope for anybody to create their own GPT, which is useful. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna use this on Schwarzenegger Gym Guide to make an interactive GPT that helps people get fit in the new year. So let's dive straight in. So to begin with, the GPT builder asks me, what would you like to make? So I'm gonna type in, I want to make a fitness GPT that helps people to get fit this year. I want to use a PDF with instructions, exercises, and links for reference, and I want to motivate and inspire people. So let's hit enter that, and then the GPT builder will take that into account and help us to configure the GPT and set up some of the key information, such as its name, its description, and its instructions. So it's given us the name of Fitness Buddy, which I quite like. So let's go ahead and hit yes, I quite like that name. And remember, if you want to bypass all of this, we can just jump into the configure section at any time and type out our own name and the description if we know exactly what that is. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to go through and walk you through how the conversational interface can help you to brainstorm ideas as you go along. Okay, so next up, it's actually suggested a Dolly 3 logo that we can use for the logo of our GPT. Now, this is quite cool, and for a lot of people, this will work nicely. But if you want to go that extra mile, you probably want to create your own custom logo outside of the GPT builder, because in order to market anything effectively, you want to stand out from the majority of things in any kind of store or list. And one of the best ways to do that is with a custom logo and a unique name. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, I've got a logo that I've prepared previously. So I can just drag and drop this into the conversation. And then I want to say, use this logo. Okay. And as you can see, that's now updated on the right hand side of the screen. Okay. So now the GPT builder is going to ask me a few more questions around how my GPT is actually going to work. And because we're uploading a document here as a reference guide, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload a document which I received in my New Year's email list from Ol Schwarzenegger and his book, Get Into Shape. So I'm just going to upload that guide. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to say, use this as a reference and hit enter. And then that will upload the guide for you. And the GPT Builder will then update. And as you can see, it's starting to populate on the right hand side a couple of the quick launch questions that people can ask the GPT to get started. And it's actually embedding that document using the document upload system available in ChatGPT. So now anybody can query that document and have responses generated from that knowledge base. So now the GPT Builder is asking how the GPT should actually interface and interact with the users. And this is all about the user experience. So here we wanted to say, I want you to do motivational and positive and inspirational and use old quotes as a guide. So what this will then do is it will set the tone and how the actual GPT converses with the user of the GPT. And it will also output things like quotes to really inspire and motivate people as the user. Now we can refine this further if we want and go into a little bit more detail around things that should or shouldn't do and suggest examples of responses the GPT Builder could give or even exercises. But for the moment, I'm gonna ditch the conversational create interface and just jump over into the configure side of things to show you some of the more advanced features that we can work on. So over in configure, we can see that our Fitness Buddy app has been generated from the conversational interface. We've got our logo, which we can change out just by clicking on the logo at the top. We can update the name, we can update the description, and we can also tweak some of the custom instructions that the GPT Builder has already inputted for us. Below this, we've then got conversation starters. And the conversation starters are basically these quick launch buttons, which occur above the 
chat field in ChatGPT and the GPT that you're building. And say if we don't like any of these, we can quickly delete them and add in our own by simply clicking on the cross and then adding our own conversation starters. But actually I like all of these so I'm going to leave them for the moment. Then we've got our knowledge area and remember this is where I've already in the conversational interface uploaded my reference material which in this case was my Arnold Schwarzenegger workout PDF and we've also uploaded a logo but if you're building something like a larger reference GPT you might want to upload several PDFs or different file types or documents or a CSV or Excel file if you're querying large data sets to work on. And then we can select what capabilities our GPT should have. So just like in ChatGPT, we can actually switch on or off web browsing. We can switch on or off Dolly image generation if you want the GPT to create an image for the user, which is great for art-based GPTs or things that want to create stickers for users. And then we can also switch on and off code interpreter which for something like a fitness app, I'm gonna leave switched off in the moment. And then we've got some of the more advanced features, which are called custom actions. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. If I click on create a new action, you'll see that we can then allow our GPT to actually retrieve information or take actions outside of ChatGPT. So this is basically where it can interface with external APIs and connect up with other programs. So if you've already seen things like plugins on ChatGPT, it's along those same lines where it could interface with a tool like Expedia or Zapier or other things outside of ChatGPT and pull in information into our GPT, which is then useful to people. A really great example of this is the Veed Video GPT, which allows you to plan out your video before moving that over into the Veed app and creating a video in Veed. Now, if you've got some basic programming and API knowledge, this should be really easy to use. First up, you set an authentication type. So here you might use an API key or you might use OWAR for security. And this is where you can basically paste this in. And this is where you want to go to the documentation to the application you want to add into your GPT and identify whether that API uses an API key like something like ConvertKit or an email system, or whether it uses OAuth, which is one of the options available on Zapier and other programs where they've got built out RESTful APIs. Now, once you set your authentication, you then want to outline your schema. And again, you want to refer back to that documentation for the program that you want to interface with GPT. And we can either import our schema from a URL, such as from the documentation of the application we're trying to connect to our GPT, or we can click on examples and either start off by using a blank template if we know the schema and we've got some basic coding skills and that documentation information. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use this text store example just to really kind of outline what this schema looks like. So if I click on pet store and what we're seeing here is that pet store API being automatically input to our schema field from the GitHub open access library called pet store. And without getting into too much detail here, what this is basically doing is it's connecting your GPT up to that application, in this case, the GitHub library of Petstore, and it's showing the available actions that that API has once it's been added to the schema. So we can see that down at the bottom here, it says available action. And so we can either query and get a list of pets, we can create a new pet, or we can show all of the pets available. And I can even test that by clicking on the test button. And this will then show us how our current GPT that we've just built or their interface with the pet store. So if I just click on allow on this side in the preview window, it's gonna start that action. And for our app Fitness Buddy, probably not the most helpful way to connect to things. And if at any time you want to delete the actions that we've input because we've changed our minds or we don't like them or we want to start from fresh, we can just click on the trash can icon here and then it will clean it and go back to normal. Now, there is one other thing that I just wanna really quickly show you with the action settings. And that is, if you're not a programmer and you don't have a huge amount of experience with APIs, you can actually jump into the Actions GPT, which is OpenAI's own GPT, which will actually walk you through how to use the Actions interface when you're creating your GPT. So again, this is a conversational system where you can work with ChatGPT, where you can connect up an API from the application you want to connect to GPT, and it will actually output the code using Code Interpreter, which is much easier if you don't have any coding skills at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to my GPT, and we're not gonna add any custom actions to this specific GPT because it's not needed. And there's one final setting which you can switch on or off, which is to use your conversation data in your GPT to improve the model. So 
If you don't want any of the data to actually go to OpenAI and you want to keep this private for your users, you can just toggle this off if you like. Now, once we're happy with things, we can actually click onto some of the conversation starters and test our GPT. So for example, here we can see that Fitness Buddy is searching the knowledge database, so that PDF upload, and I can see that that is working nicely in this example. And our Fitness Buddy is giving some good plans and motivation to people using it. Now, once we're completely happy with our GPT, that's when we can either decide to share it via a link or share it publicly. So first up, I'm just going to save it. And when I click on save, it allows me to publish this to just myself, so to keep it private, to publish this to anyone with a link, or to actually make it public on the GPT store. And if you click on public and then click confirm, this will then dive directly into our fitness buddy GPT and allow us to interface it and test it further. And if we ever want to edit this GPT further, we can just click on the little drop down arrow next to it and click on edit the GPT and then it takes us back into the GPT builder. And it really is that easy. There are loads of amazingly creative things that you can do with the GPT Builder, and there'll be lots of custom GPTs coming up and available on the GPT Store. The limit here really is only your imagination, and there are lots of different use cases, from creating image GPTs, to deeper database GPTs, to conversational GPTs like we've created today. I hope you found this video useful. I've put up another great video here outlining how you can make money from the GPT store that's definitely worth checking out. And remember, please do share your GPTs in the comments below as I'd love to try them out myself. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing and I'll catch you again next time. See ya.